Welcome to the channel. We'll get right into it. We're going to talk about coupling links, otherwise known as hammer locks, cold shuts, lap links, and a quick link. This is, I just threw this in there to show you the difference in strength. Uh, this is just called a, a grade 100 master link by Gunnabo. This product is Gunnabo also. They're both made in Sweden. The cold shut is Taiwan, lap links Taiwan, tractor supply, very cheap, $1.50. Fairly tough for the money. This guy here is made in China, uh, 3 16th stainless steel. And also, I want to throw in there as a new channel, to survive they need subscribers. I put my little blue vise down here in the lower right corner. If you hover your cursor on it, the subscribe button will come up. I'd really appreciate it. subscribe. In the near future, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Item yet to be determined, or cash amount yet to be determined. So I'd appreciate it. But back to the subject, getting into rigging gets really complicated, but for most of us small farmers, ranchers, homesteaders, all this stuff is more than enough. I went the extra mile on these items here because of the quality, and you can freeze this at any point and read what I wrote. And if you have any questions, go ahead and don't uh, hesitate to ask them in the comment section. I will answer each and every one. And later on in the video, I'm going to show you the coupling link or the hammer lock, how it works, how this bushing grips this recessed area in the middle and will not let it go left or right. We'll get into that later. Of course you expect it, the more money, the stronger it should be. And you can see here, this is a 3 8 inch Gunnable Grade 100, 8,800 pounds working load limit. Also you'll run into SWL for safe working load. But what's interesting is from the 3 8 inch, we step up to a master link. Gunny Bow Grade 100 Master Link in a half inch and it's a 7,000 pound working load limit. Almost a ton less working limit than this guy right here. And this guy here lives and breathes off nothing but the sheer strength of this 5 16th inch pin right here. This is a 3 8 inch cold shut. This is a 5 16th inch lap link. The 3 16th stainless steel quick link on the far right is a one half inch. It is made in China, both these Taiwan. But it's interesting to note that the half inch stainless steel quick link, properly screwed together up tight, has a working load limit of 2,500 pounds, while the 3 8 inch coat shut, and I'm going to discuss the proper way to connect these, to terminate these if you will, 3 8 inch coat shut has a safe working load of 2,650 pounds. This, this guy has actually got more working strength than the quick link. What happens with the quick links? is the threads. At some point, if you've ever used them, you get into a situation where you do put quite a bit of pull on them, and it doesn't take much to work it for the threads. Now you're going to have to take an open-end wrench or a small crescent and open this guy up with a wrench. I think he's going to be handy to have around. It might get you out of a bind. That remains to be seen, but I think it's pretty handy. And I like the fact that it is stainless steel. I also want to make note that the lower cost, and the cost of these is from $1.50 to $1.80 from tractor supplies to the box stores. If done right, this is the most, definitely the most economical way to go ahead and take care of your chains or quick rig some cables or whatever you're doing there. When you close a cold shut, after you hook it up, you're going to bend him in place you're going to protrude about an eighth of an inch this part through this hole. This has to be peened in place. You got to beat this flat with a hammer or it will open back up. Ideally, you would put a tack weld on it. That's what's recommended. Same way with the lap link. Once you get him in place, you've got to beat them together with a hammer against the hard surface or squeeze them together with the channel locks, whatever you have there. If you can get in a vise, so much the better. Mash it together. And ideally, he should be tack welded. What's interesting is on YouTube, there's a video that shows a guy, I'm pretty sure he's in Europe, but he's got a test station set up with a press and a, and a and hydraulics, and he's got gauges in line and shows you these actually failing under pressure. And what's interesting is the lap link really hung tough. As he pulled these apart, he hooked here and here and pulled them apart. These hooked parts actually straightened up, both of them straightened up to the point where they just slipped right on out. Never did actually break. 
the cold shut, he didn't paint it or weld it like you're supposed to. So once he put the pressure on the cold shut, and it simply just opened back up like you see now, and the chain link slipped out. Kind of to be expected. But the lap link was extremely tough. Of course, you don't know what brand it was or what it was made. These are just zinc coated steel. On the cold shut and the lap link, if properly done, after they're closed together, you've made your connection, you've shut them together, squeezed them together, they should be tack welded shut. And if you want to reverse it, you're going to have to carry a grinder, a cutting wheel, and cut it off. Uh, that's where this guy shines, but he shines at a price. Uh, as you can see, it's $20. This is a coupling link also called hammerlock and it got its name because you can put this together with a hammer and take it apart with a hammer but you'll probably need a punch also okay the next shot will clear this off and assemble this guy and then take him back apart and i want to show you the inside of this coupler how it's made it's, it's pretty neat the way they designed this it's interesting to note that on the lap link and the cold shut they state do not use for overhead lifting of a load Support of human weight, athletic or playground equipment. Before I drive that pin in, I'm gonna see if I can show this. Uh, there's an undersized flat spring in this bushing. It's got a dead stop right here on each end. Each end of the pin has a taper to it. When you drive it through, you spread out the flat spring, the coil. You'll slide it through under pressure as soon as it hits the middle recessed area, the spring will compress down against it and hold it. And then to drive it out again, you take a hammer and a punch. Put my flashlight under it. Let's try that. I think you get the idea there. That's kind of neat. Now the pin would just slide. The amount of clearance here, I was kind of it kind of surprised me, the amount of clearance, but on the other hand, you can't get it too tight. You've got to have some clearance because it's got the swivel. And it'll come out either side. And go in either way. So, I'll drive it this way. You can actually move the bushing, or move the pin. But there it is locked together. Now this thing, holding the chain together, if you're working in the brush, in the woods, even in the yard, compared to something like this. This guy, I gave $6.29 for him. Uh, it's one quarter to five sixteenths with the cutter pins. There's, there's no, you couldn't even drag this through your yard. Blades of grass would eventually take these keys out. If this has any practical purpose at all, it's gonna be above ground. And then you're not supposed to be lifting any considerable amount of weight with it. Don't think it's worth it. This guy on the other hand, he's worth it. Nothing to knock him out. It's supposed to stay. Compared to a field repair, of a lap link and a cold shut, you're gonna to have to carry a cordless grinder or a cutting wheel or take it back to your shop and cut it off. Where with him, a hammer and a punch, you should be able to change him out in the field. I think this is very hard. I think it has to be. And the flat springs look good. Looks like they just work like they're supposed to. They spread out from the pin and compress back in around the recessed area in the center. These guys are tough. They're cheap and they're tough if you close them up and tack weld them. Well, that's it. If you liked it, please say so. Hit the like button and please subscribe. And I thank you for watching.